We're going to start off with some ball handling with Alex. We're going to start stationary. That's the easiest level to do things. And the thing we're going to start off first with Alex is doing something simple that we call soft taps. All he's going to be doing is taking the ball, just tapping it back and forth between his fingers. Now what we can do, there we go. He's going to start and he's just stationary moving around. If we want to ch begin to challenge him, make it more difficult, we're going to ask him to raise the ball up higher above his head. Just nice and soft between his fingers. We can ask him now, as he's doing this, and he's a, I mean, he's a pretty proficient ball handler, I'm just going to turn him a little bit here. So he's facing you guys. Now I want to begin to challenge what we call his volume of action. I want him to do soft taps and reach out as far as he can in front, as far as he can to the side. What's great about this, when we're working on this, this addresses your functional ability. As you all know in wheelchair basketball, functional ability is key, and we've got to be able to maximize that when we're teaching every athlete. So Alex is going to keep doing his soft taps and try to reach and extend his volume of action, get comfortable handling the ball in all of the spaces. We start out in the middle, but then we move to the very edges of his, of his control. Next thing we're going to add now, okay, we're going to start doing power slaps. He's going to start really hitting the ball hard, learning how to be strong with the ball, grabbing it hard, just like a rebounder would. So he's slapping it really, really hard. And we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to say, move it up high, Alex. So he's going to be slapping it as high as he can. High rebound, off to the side. Okay, loose ball, off to the other side. And we really want to make sure we work all of his areas of functional ability to the maximum edges. While he's doing this now, I can add another element to it. I can say, Alex, I want you to do power slaps, but close your eyes. Go ahead. Okay. We want to get him feeling the ball. We want to get him visualizing what he's doing. And he's still working the full volume of action as far as he can. Now we can speed it up, have him do it faster. So his eyes are closed, slapping the ball, working his volume of action, up high too. There should be edges now where he starts to feel like maybe he's losing his balance a little bit, and that's good. That's where, we want to, that's where we want to practice, right on the edge of our ability. And if he loses the ball, that's okay, because if you're playing on the edge, if you're practicing training on the edge, every day you should make some mistakes, because it's those mistakes that we grow from. The okay, next thing we're going to do, really simple, we're going to start doing what we call a regular dribble. He's going to be dribbling with his right hand. He's a right-handed shooter, right-handed dribbler. It's just a regular dribble. He's going to keep his eyes up. We want things to always be fundamental. And now we'll have him switch to his left hand and do a regular dribble on the left side. Okay, he's doing a great job keeping his eyes up. He's looking at the camera. Now he's going to be able to read the court in a basketball game. We can put the ball back in his right hand. We're going to have him do something called a big dribble. He's going to dribble the ball at least as high as his shoulder. That's the key when you're doing a big dribble. Give your athletes a cue that they have to dribble to. Not just a bigger dribble, but a dribble to his shoulder. And this starts to challenge his control. Okay? He's doing a great job keeping his eyes up. Okay? He's going to switch to his left hand. You'll notice the whole time we're doing this, we're always trying to do drills, and in this case ball handling, with balance in mind. Okay? Balance takes a, you know, takes a lot of different forms. When we're talking about balance in terms of skill development, it's making sure that we work on the right side, the left side, all areas of his functional ability. Okay, Nice big dribble, get it as high as you can up to that shoulder. Now we're going to have him move back to his right hand, and he's going to do what we call a little dribble. He's going to try to dribble as low as he can and still keep his eyes up. This gets to be challenging. Okay, He's doing a pretty good job right now. Okay, if I'm, if I'm working with him in practice, I'm going to say, Alex, I want you to try to get it even lower. There you go. Good, good. That's it. And keep your eyes up. That's nice. Good job. Let's switch to the left side now. He's going to do the same thing. He's going to try to keep his eyes up. He's got a pretty small dribble there. And now I'm going to challenge him. I'm going to say, even, even lower. Good, good. That's the idea. Okay, and you can see he's losing a bit of control. That's good. This gives him a place to work on. So as, as, as simple as some of these drills can be, they can be made more challenging. 
Okay, next thing we're going to do is what we call uh, a, a, drib a dribble exchange. He's just simply going to take it from his right hand, dribble it around in front to his left hand. He's going to dribble from axle to axle. So he's going to dribble all the way around to the side of his chair off his axle and bring it all the way back. He's got to keep his eyes up the whole time. Different athletes with different levels of functional ability are going to do this slightly differently. If you're a class one and you don't have functional use of your trunk muscles, you're going to have to learn where you need to hold on to your chair or your wheels to get your balance to dribble in front. If you're a class four in the functional system, we don't want you to hold on to your chair. We want you to lean out. Alex is a, a two, I believe, and uh, we want him to try to, as much as possible, lean as far as possible to challenge him uh, in this respect. Next thing we're going to work on is what we call a power crossover. He's going to take the ball, he's going to be dribbling it on his right side, and he's going to palm the ball, carrying it over one dribble on the opposite side with his right hand before he exchanges to his left. That's it, go ahead and then cup it and bring it over. Now what we want to do as he's working on this, we want to get this to be a movement that's as close and tight to his body as possible. Right over, tight to his body, close to his lap, because that protects the ball from the defender. So really, really sharp, quick movement. Okay, Cup that ball and carry it over. So it's a palming movement. Don't exchange it in front. What you're going to do is you're actually going to dribble it, dribble it opposite side with your right hand once before you exchange. Okay. So what you're going to do, watch one more time. So what you're going to do, the key thing is with a crossover, is that you're actually going to dribble it on the opposite side with your hand. So if I'm doing it, I'm going to dribble right hand, dribble, and then exchange. Okay? You want to do it that way because as you go over, your, that's it, your hand's on top of the ball, your arm's on top of the ball, it protects it from the defender as you're changing sides. Okay? It's harder to do. This, what's great about this right now, Alex is a college wheelchair basketball player. So he's one of the better players in the country, yet this is still challenging for him. So now we're beginning to learn some of the things that we, we can work on to continue to develop his ball handling. And that's, a, that's exactly what we want to find out as we progress. Next thing we can do, now we're going to dribble around the back. He's going to go all the way around his body. There we go, good. Now the same thing we were talking about again. We're starting to see him bobble the ball a little bit. That's good. These are the edges of where his strengths are. It's okay to lose the ball. We want to see some of that because now we know where we can work. We're playing at the edge of our control. So Alex got some things that already he can begin to think about working on in the off season when he's at UTA. Okay? And remember, always balance. So he was dribbling one way around his body. We want to make sure he can go the other way as well. So that's a beginning look at some of the things you can do to progress yourself through ball handling. And there are lots and lots of resources on the internet that you can go and see to take a look at good ball handling. One of the best resources I've ever seen are the Pete Maravich drills. And they're a standard with a lot of, uh, a lot of professional players and players developing up through the ranks. And I'd encourage you to take a look at, at some of those things. The next thing we're going to take a look at, we're going to go down to the basket, and now we're going to talk about a shooting progression how you can increasingly make things difficult and challenge your shooters from people that are first learning how to shoot layups all the way out to challenging game-like progressions. Let's come on down here, Alex.